Capricorn, Happy New Year. It's uh, 2021 and uh, let's take a look forward rather than where we've been because that's not at all a pleasant experience, is it? Um, got your chart up here as you can see. I'm not going to animate it. I like to take the first month of a new year and just look at some of the key aspects that are operating and that are going to be what I think significant for you in terms of shaping the way the next 12 months uh, are going to be. You'll notice um, the great conjunction, as they call it, late in 2020, involved Saturn, your ruling planet, here in the second house with Jupiter. This transit of Saturn is going to last at least two and a half years. <coughs> And Jupiter here will quickly move out of this area. This is a finance sector, a money-making sector. So a lot of the focus, when these two planets come together, it shows us the usually the main focus that is going to occupy our attention. So there's no doubt money is going to really be the focus here. But there's another factor here that we need to look at, which is this north node in your sixth house. The sixth house, second house and tenth houses have to do with your work, your finance. But the north node or the karmic point this year, for most of it anyhow, is in that area of service, how you actually serve other people. And I think I've touched on this in the last year because it's... Yeah, it's been transiting here just a, a little bit now, but this is an even greater focus, especially because Venus is involved when 2021 20, starts. Venus is involved in what we call the nodal axis. That's your career. So we have the great conjunction in the finance sector. We've got the North Node or the karmic point, which, which really is fueled by all of your desires. And then we've got the ruler of your 10th house, Venus involved in this karmic axis. So big, big changes take place, but that's all dependent on this modality of service, executing the work that you do in the best possible way you can, differentiating yourself from everyone else, and then using that distinction to launch you into a successful period. You see, there's a couple of things here. I've mentioned it to some of the other star signs. Saturn, if you take a look at these lines here, these indicate the aspects or phase angles. Notice here there's been a, well, there is coming a tough Mars aspect right now. You've got the Saturn Uranus square. Then you're going to have the Mars square. This, this involves a lot of frustration. And this is coming from the fifth house, which is your creativity this is where you're best able to progress yourself. Uranus is a progressive planet, but Saturn, your ruler, is a conservative planet. So you're trying to weigh up how to best, you know, fulfill your obligations and your responsibilities, which is the Saturn, against how can you fulfill yourself creatively and spiritually. That's the domain of this fifth house, ninth house. <coughs> And 12th house, there's Venus there in the 12th house. So there's another point of the fact that your work this coming year has to engage you not only in terms of your hands, but in terms of your head and your heart, which is the spiritual side. Jupiter will move out of this second house into the contractual area. That takes place on uh, the 14th of May. <clears throat> it will spend some time here, then it will retrograde back on the 28th of July, um, back into Aquarius. <clears throat> so this is a revisionary period, Capricorn. You're going to be yeah, focused on the money, but then there's the necessity to communicate and exchange ideas, negotiate, and uh, finalize some of those agreements. That may not happen so easily. We see the confusing, idealistic Neptune sitting there in the third house, you've got to be very careful how you structure your agreements this year. And that's shown by Neptune. It's shown by Jupiter, which is the ruler of your 12th house. It's 
as well as the third house. Twelfth house is the house of loss, secret hidden things. So you must be careful not to be deceived by people, not to see more in a situation or a person than is there. That's the mechanism of Neptune, that idealism causes you to see the world through rose-coloured glasses. That transit will retrograde back and then again forward when it moves into Pisces once again on the 29th of December. So pretty much for the whole of this year, these two areas of your horoscope are going to be pretty much an important component of your life, working on your finances, understanding the people you're dealing with, and improving your overall skills, scheduling, time management, and health as well. This sixth house, <coughs> pardon me, this sixth house is related to all of these sorts of things. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about for you is the uh, four eclipses, two lunar, two solar, that will be taking place. Interestingly, it's going to bring us back to this nodal axis, your soul's yearning, where your soul is moving in this next 12 months. It is here in this area. The north node sort of moves in a retrograde fashion backwards. So most of the year it's going to be here in this sixth house. Take care of your health. Take care of your diet. Take care of your debts and obligations. That's only going to happen if you manage this side of your life, the finance, the income, and the creativity. In other words, it's not enough to simply earn money. You have to find some satisfaction within yourself. We know that you haven't been particularly happy with Mars here in this fourth house, which is one's inner happiness and contentment. Fortunately, as I said earlier, that planet is moving out. You're still going to be confronted with some of the frustration. Some of that may be coming from your home life because this fourth house relates to your domestic sphere. <coughs> 26th of May, we see the first lunar eclipse there in the 12th house where you have your past karma point and Venus, the career planet. So a lot of attention is going to be behind the scenes. 12th house is a house where you're not out in the limelight. You're there really carefully working through, sifting through the minutiae, the detail of what you have to do. And that's a great idea. You need a little bit of seclusion. That's around 26th of May. But it doesn't mean that that effect happens only on that date. This will continue for some time after the eclipse event. That also brings back the topic of expense, managing your money and being very, very careful to whom you give your money and your time and your resources to. That's especially so given that the career planet Venus is involved. Maybe you're helping others, your co-workers. That's also this sixth house. Maybe you're not scrutinizing people enough. Maybe they're using you. Twelfth house, Neptune, career, co-workers. That to me seems an area that needs a lot of focus. The 10th of June brings us, just having a look at the notes here, brings us to the solar eclipse. That's in Gemini. Gemini is here, the sixth house. So you can see there's almost like a repetitive theme coming up for you throughout the year. And this sixth house is really the focus of your future karma. Mind you, what you find is that this North Node gives the desire, the push, and it may even give you the success in these areas. But sometimes, as I've said earlier, if you're not prepared, that success can be short lived. So a lot of planning is necessary, especially around these eclipse dates, 26th of May, 10th of June. 19th of November. Now that eclipse, obviously Rahu, the North Node, will move back into this fifth house. And this fifth house is your creativity. It's your children. It's love affairs, by the way. <coughs> and so these aspects of your life become a dominant theme right at the end of 2021. The final solar eclipse reiterates what we've been saying here about your 12th house and how this year you need to find a way to scrutinize, discriminate, 
dispassionately step back from people, circumstances, and your own dreams. Because, you know, the, the past karma point here shows us what you're carrying forward. Desire is really what fuels the karma. Your destiny is fueled by what you desire, what you cherish within yourself. And here, it it is a good bit of advice, I think, to ask you to spend a little bit of time going within yourself. And really, not just intellectually, but spiritually and in a heart sense, examining what it is you really, really want in your life. Because those desires, unconsciously or consciously, are going to manifest the experiences, the people, the events that happen in your life. So this year is a year of responsibility, but in a slightly different way than you probably uh, would have expected. I've done a uh, 3,000 word forecast for each of the 12 signs, including yours, Capricorn, at astrology.com.au. Subscribe here so you can keep up with what's going on. And if you need a more detailed analysis for what's coming in the next 12 months, you can always drop me a line here and we can make that happen. I'll be back in February. I'm going to be picking up the monthly forecast for us all. And I hope you'll join me. In the meantime, stay safe. Have a really happy new year. And don't drink too much of that uh, gin. Okay. Bye-bye now.